Hey guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, today's tutorial is going to be more of an application of things we've learned in previous tutorials instead of being a tutorial where I teach you about a new, spa a new aspect of end curses. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be um, actually creating um, a window that has a sort of menu bar thing like this um, or you know an emulated menu bar. Um, and we're, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create that using some stuff we already know. <coughs> The way I'm going to go about this is, and I'm not going to, you know, design the whole thing up front like you would in like a real live project. But instead, I'm going to kind of iteratively develop the program so that, you know, what we'll do is we'll start out really uh, naive and specific, and then after we have a, you know, a solution for a specific uh, use case, then we can generalize that uh, and make it more reusable for other menu bars and stuff for different windows. So that's kind of how we're going to go about it. This will probably be a, at least a two-part video, I'd say. Uh, probably in the first one, we'll do a naive and specific solution, and in the second one, we'll do uh, we'll take what we had and we'll generalize it and make it more reusable. So, uh, and just a disclaimer: this is not meant to be like extremely efficient and optimized code. I'm just kind of writing code to show you guys how you can go about doing stuff like this and showing you a sort of typical development process with end curses. So. Um, Essentially, all I have here to start off with is the uh, an curses or sorry, a C++ file that has several standard includes at the top. Uh, whoops, I need to get rid of Opera. I think I downloaded it to try it out. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm also using a namespace std, and then we have our main function with some standard end curses uh, setup and um, closing stuff. So to start out, we're, I'm using no echo um, just because I don't want what the user presses to show up on the screen uh, by default. And then this uh, function here, I believe I covered in a previous tutorial. I'll put cards to any of the, any of the other tutorials I've explained things from. But um, this basically makes it so the cursor doesn't show up. Like that won't show up when it's waiting for input. The, your mileage may vary with that. It doesn't always work for every terminal, but on mine it, it works. So I'm be using that. So. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to create a window so that we can actually put a menu, menu bar on a window. So we're going to create a window uh, just called win because we're only going to have one uh, and we're unimaginative. Um, and then the way I want to set this window up is I'm going to make it exactly half the width and the half the height of the terminal and then I'm going to center it in the middle of the screen. So the way we're going to go about that is we're going to need to get the max um, lines and columns or, or y values and x values for the terminal. So the way we do that is we first create two variables. Uh, I'll start with y, y max and x max. Then we're going to call the function get max yx, which is a uh, ncurses function. Um, I did a tutorial on this. I'll do a card so you guys can go check that out if you didn't already. Uh, the first parameter is the window we're going to need to get the max yx from, and in this case we just want standard screen, which is the entire terminal basically. Uh, and we want to store the y and the y max and the x and the x max variable. So now that we have that, we can actually do our calculation and create a window that's half the height and width of the screen. So the way that works is first we pass it the um, the number of lines. The way we, the way we create that is uh, using new in is we first pass it the number of rows or lines we need, which would be exactly half the max y value. Um, and then if we want it to be half the width, we use the exactly half um, the x max value. Um, now, in order to make it centered in the screen, we need to move it, because <coughs> if our window is um, half the size of the terminal, we need to move a quarter of the way down in order for it to be centered in the screen. Um, you'll see what I mean in a minute. So what we'll do is we'll move, we'll move down uh, exactly a quarter of the um, rows or lines and we'll move across exactly a quarter of the columns like that. Now and it's just so that we can actually see our window um, we need to for now at least we need to put um, a border around it so we're going to use the box function again previous tutorial I talked about this I'll, I'll do a little card or something. Um, so the first parameter for box is our window and then the two other parameters are um, you could set these to values, but if we set them to zero, it'll just do the default, which is a standard border around the outside. Um, and then finally, we need to actually um, refresh the screen and make sure that the program doesn't just ex exit immediately by doing a git char. Um, now, we could do a w refresh uh, window and then do a w git char win, but w git char actually gives you a refresh for free, so we don't actually need that first refresh, it's redundant. 
So here's our you know beginner program. Here's the beginning of our our uh, program for now. So um, let's run this. I just have a, a make file here, a very basic make file. Uh, so we'll do a make. Oops, if I could type today. Make and run main like that. And as you'll see, we have. So what, what what's going on here is we got exactly half the width and height. Now, if it's an odd number of rows or lines, it won't be exactly half, but it'll be pretty close. Um, and then, as you can see, it's moved down a quarter of the way and across a quarter of the way, and that made it pretty centered, um, as centered as it can be. Um, and then we ran our box uh, function on our windows, so we get this border on the outside of it. And then now it's just waiting for me to press a character. And as you can see, there's no cursor, and when I press a character, it's just going to disappear because that's all we have here, and then it ends. Um, <clears throat> so, okay, now that we have our window, let's actually try to put um, a menu into it. So I'm actually just going to run that again so I can kind of discuss how my thought process works on this. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a move w print w. Um, so this allows us to move within a window. So our window when we want to move to position uh, the row zero. Uh, so our, our menu is always going to be in this row, this row zero here. So our y value is zero. Then for our x value or our column value, um, we could put it right here, but that would be right up on the edge, and I don't think that looks visually appealing. Um, I'm probably going to put it right here at the second value here. So we go to oops, we go to uh, x value or column number two, and then we. Um, want to print out our first menu option. In this case, I'm going to use file as our first menu. So we'll do file, um, and that's it for move w print w. So now, if we rerun this program, you'll see that we have file, kind of like the way we would expect it, hopefully. Um, and I think that looks pretty good. It kind of, it definitely reminds me of a menu bar. So I think that's a decent style to use. So again, oh, sorry, I'll just keep that running. Now. Let's do another one. Let's because it'd be boring if we just had one menu. So now we actually have to start kind of thinking about okay, well, where do we put this? So our last menu was at position two, um, and it had four characters, which means that if we wanted it to be right at the end here, we would put it at position six. But we want it to be at least one space over. Um, so what we'll do is so two plus four is six plus one is seven. So we want our second menu to be at position seven. And we'll just make it edit to make it, you know, simple. Uh, so there you go, edit. Now, if we close that and rerun it, you'll see now we have file space edit. Perfect. So let's do one more just so that it's not just um, two two menus. Uh, and we'll make this one not four characters just so it's a little different than the other ones. Um, and so again, we have to do a similar calculation. So we have seven here plus four characters would be eleven, but we want it one more than that, so we'll put it at position twelve. So finally, if we run that, you'll see we have file edit options. I personally think that looks pretty good. I think it looks. It reminds me of a menu bar. I know what it is just by looking at it. Um, but so this is boring though because now this program doesn't really do anything besides print this out, and then as soon as you hit a character, it disappears. So. What we're going to do instead is we're going to actually put this in a loop, or we're going to create a loop. Um, so we'll do while um, w get char or we'll do uh, first we have to create a character to actually contain our input. So we'll do ch equals w get char when like that. And technically this is um, bad practice because this code will run forever; it'll never cancel, I don't think. Um, but that's kind of what I want for this program. So um, because we just want, I just want Control C to exit the program. So, in this case, only Control C will exit the program, but that's fine. Um, so, what we, now that we have that, we don't need this W get chart down here. Um, and so, if we just now make and run this program, you'll see that no matter what I press, I, I don't know if you can hear me typing. No matter what I press, it doesn't just exit out, which is good. That's what we want. And if I hit Control C, it does. So. Now, what I want to do is I want to make it so that if we hit the character F, that we highlight our file menu. Um, and same as I want the same thing to happen if we press E, I want edit to be highlighted. And if we press O, I want options to be highlighted. So the way we go about doing that is we can use a switch statement. Um, you could also use if statements, but 
for this purpose, I'm going to use switch statements, um, and then we'll have a case for every possible character. So we want to switch on our character that they've pressed. So if the character pressed, or sorry, if the user pressed F, um, we want to do something. But for now, I'll just do a break. If the user presses E, we want to do something. If the user presses L, we want to do something. And then we'll have a default case as well. Um, and I don't think that the default needs a break, but I'll put one anyways, because I don't think it hurts. So now, um, what we want to do is, if the character F was pressed by the user, we want to highlight the file menu. So how do we go about doing that? So first, let's just copy that line and put it up here, because we're going to have to print it again. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to print it with an attribute. So we'll do w attr on um, for our window. And we want to give it the attribute a standout, which is essentially highlights the, the menu item. And then we'll do a w attr off for the, the same exact attribute. So now let's just naively, let's see how this works. So now if we press the character F, it highlights file. But now we can't get it to unhighlight and we can't highlight any of the other menus. So, okay, so now we need to set it up for um, basically if they press a different character we, we want to unhighlight all the menus so how do we unhighlight all the menus well we just reprint them again without any highlight on them like like so so if the this what this will do is if the user presses anything besides f e or o it'll just unhighlight all the menus so now let's make the program and rerun it so if we hit f it will highlight file but if we hit any other character it'll unhighlight the file oh no it won't. what's going on did i did i make and run here oh, oh i didn't save it that's what's going on eh, there we go so now it's saved now if we make and run if we hit f it highlights f and if, if we hit any other character besides f it unhighlights file so that's kind of the behavior we want so now let's do the same thing here but let's do it for the other characters so if they press the character e we actually want to re um we reprint out the uh, edit menu option, but we want to do it with the win or the A standout um, attribute. And so we'll do that kind of same thing here. And we can apply the same thing down in our O option. So we just change this to 12 and options like so. So now if we close this and oops, rerun it, You'll see if we press E, it highlights edit. If we hit O, it highlights options. And if we hit F, it highlights file. But now the problem is it doesn't unhighlight them ever at this point until you hit a different character. So if you hit F and then A, it'll unhighlight them. But I want it so that if we hit F, it highlights file. And if we hit E, it unhighlights file because you shouldn't be able to highlight both at the same time. So the way we actually go about that is we just reprint every single uh, time. So you get to see there's a lot of um, uh, basically there's a lot of repeated code here which is bad practice for sure um, so what we'll do is we'll have each time we um, press one of these cases we want to unhighlight the other options so in this case we have 7 and edit so now every time we press F it'll unhighlight E and or edit and options every time we press E it'll unhighlight file and options and every time we press O, it'll unhighlight file and um, oops, we'll let that say options there. Uh, it'll unhighlight um, file and edit. So now let's test that out and run it. So if we hit F, it highlights file. If we hit E, it highlights edit. If we hit O, it highlights options. And as you can see, as we press those, it unhighlights the other ones. And if I press like A, it'll unhighlight all the options. So um, that's kind of the basic, naive, very specific solution um, for, for this problem. Now, this is very hard to generalize and it's not super reusable. For instance, if I wanted to change file um, to, I don't know, we'll change it to terminal uh, as the first menu option. That requires me to change the X value of all of these other options so that they uh, properly account for this new longer file. Uh, or new longer menu item item and also I have to change it in every occurrence so now I have to go down here and change file to uh, terminal and I have to change file to terminal down here and I have to change it up top so as you can see this is this code is not super easy to work with 
it's a naive specific solution it does work but in the next tutorial we're going to take this and we're going to generalize it and make it easier to you know just throw in any menu item you want and the computer will do most of the work for you it'll calculate the menu width it'll calculate you know where the next one has to go so that'll be the next tutorial uh, and also in a probably a third tutorial I think uh, I'll make it so that it actually displays a menu or something down here because right now obviously it just highlights the menu it doesn't actually display like options which is kind of what you'd expect so I'll probably do that in, in a, a third tutorial but yeah so I hope you guys like this so far and um, look forward to the next one hopefully you know soon so uh, if you guys liked it please comment like subscribe and uh, I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial